What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use the field force in Cinema 4D R21 to create some sweet looking text. Um, and you can also do this to objects, it doesn't have to be text. You can do words. Um, I chose to do letters because I did a poster for my Skillshare class. Um, and this is like the sort of render we're going to be creating um, along with that and this. And I basically used these things to create a poster like this one here. Um, and in my Skillshare class, I actually covered how to make this whole poster. Uh, if you're interested in my in uh, Skillshare, by the way, I have a two months free discount. Um, link will be in the description if it, that's something you're interested in. Um, and I also created this and this poster. But I'm going to be showing you how to just do the Cinema 4D part here. Um, and we're not going to be doing the textures. These textures are from my materials pack v6 if you're interested and I'm going to be using my own personal Lightroom. Uh, both my materials pack and my Lightroom are in my store if you are interested. But you can just use whatever materials you'd like. Um, there's so many options that look good so you don't have to use mine and use whatever Lightroom you'd like. I'm actually going to be giving away the Cinema 4D um, setup so it will be available to download in the description below once this video hits 100 likes. You can also get everything on my Patreon page, including the Cinema 4D file with the Lightroom and textures, and the Photoshop files. The Patreons also get videos early, shoutouts in my videos, and other really great stuff. Everything in my store, um, stuff like that. So be sure to check that out. Before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to this man for making the tutorial I followed to learn. Um, field force and everything and I had this like um, bookmarked not really bookmarked but I saw this tutorial and uh, remembered it for when I got R21 which I recently did and I follow this tutorial pretty closely in this tutorial but I do change a few major things up to get a completely different look um, but I'm gonna link his channel down in the description check him out and a uh, big shout out to him for this concept and the idea. The first thing we need is an object or text and I'm gonna go ahead and use text so I'm gonna go MoGraph Mo Text and align this middle and I'm gonna go ahead and use an O like I did before and I'm gonna select a font and it's gonna be Adobe Gothic STD. I'm gonna change the depth to 50 and caps, you can kind of do whatever you want with caps. I'm gonna go ahead and do step and increase it to like 10-ish. Um, and let me hop out of the camera here for a second so we can get like an angled view. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, let me hop back into the camera. Um, well, once you get the text set up how you want, we're actually going to need it um, to not be mode text anymore. We need it to be an extrude and a spline. So you could go about creating the text with the text spline and adding it to an extrude nerbs. Um, that's up to you. But I'm just going to go ahead and do mode text and then press C to make it editable. And go ahead and drag the extrude nerbs out and delete all the nulls. And we're good to go. Now we're going to go over to the new section in R21, the volume builder, and add that. Um, it's actually not a new thing, but like that section here is new. And we're going to go ahead and add our object there. Select the volume builder and change the volume type to vector and make the size 2. And then go over to this other new section with the pink parallel lines and add a random field. Now um, a few things to note here. Um, where it says noise type uh, perlin, you can actually choose a bunch of these and they'll give you a bunch of different results um, at the end. Uh, but I do think perlin is the best along with electric, but feel free to mess around with these towards the end. But I'm gonna go ahead and change the scale to a thousand. And if you change the noise type, you will probably have to change the scale to get um, different variations. And I don't know, perlin is still my favorite, I think, along with electric. Now go ahead and take that random field and drop it into the volume builder. And then on the volume builder, set the random field mode to cross. Then click a random field here down below 
and you'll notice it created a cube at the bottom of our text. We want to go ahead and move that around. Um, actually, first, I'm going to click off everything, click the random field, and drag that up so this cube here fits with our shape. It's perfect. And then I'm going to go to the volume builder and the random field in there and change the size. So this middle column is all the scaling and then the left is the position. So we're going to have to bump all these up. So maybe 200 on X, 150 on Y, 150 we'll probably have to go to 200 on Y. Just do 200 and then 150 on Z. And let's increase that. Okay, a little too far. There we go. Increase the Y. And I believe our whole sh um, letter is covered there, which is what we want. We can go ahead and double click the top of the stoplight on the volume builder to hide it, make sure it's red. With the random field selected, go to simulate forces field force. And down here, we want to drag the volume builder and make that a volume object. And you can mess with the strength. I'm going to go to 100, although you can do 200 too if you want like more lines when we get to the end. Um, or if you want less, go a little lower and then change that to set absolute velocity. Um, go ahead and drag that field force up so it again is over top um, our whole object, which I think this should be. Um, click off everything then so you have nothing selected and go to MoGraph Matrix and set the mode to object and the object we want the O or whatever your object is in the volume builder. Um, go ahead and change the count to about 200 or 300 or 100, whatever. You can mess around with that. Then uh, set generate to thinking particles and go to simulate um, thinking particles TP settings. And where it says all here in particle groups, go ahead and drag that to TP group. And I like to keep this up because we'll use it again. So I'm going to drag it off to the side. And finally, hit the stoplight on the matrix to hide it so we don't have those annoying cubes in the way. Now we're going to click off um, everything again and go to MoGraph Tracer. The trace link is going to be the all particle groups again. So drag that back in and drag it off to the side because we will need it one more time. And then we're going to go to the cube here and create a new null. All right, click on that. Go to Programming and Espresso. Um, and we're going to add a couple things. So I already have one of them here, which is P pass, which you can just search for. And then the other one is P force, P force object. There it is. And on the P pass, we want to add the particle group. And after that, after that, we can close that and we won't need it anymore. And then the force object, we can add the field force there. We can also add other forces from the simulate um, tab. Um, you can get something like this with that. So this was the rotation one. I didn't mess around with these enough because I just kept getting weird results and I didn't it wasn't something I had time to really tinker with, um, but that is an option to use other forces. Um, once you add the force you want there, go ahead and connect these two by connecting the dots and go ahead and close that out. Now, if we go to zero here and press play, you'll see that these, um, you'll see that the tracer is tracing these points to create our shape, whatever it is. Um, and they're really smooth right now but if we render them, we will not see them. So if you would like to see them, go ahead and get extrude nerd or sweep nerves rather. And then some sort of spline that's enclosed to be the shape of the pipes or whatever. So I'm going to use a normal circle and I'm going to set the size to two, add the circle into the sweep and then the tracer below it. And if we give it a second, you'll see it um, 
eventually come up. There we go. And I like to go and uncheck the sweep nerves and then go to the sweep settings. You can mess with the caps. I'm going to go to the object tab. And if you have something other than a circle too, you could uh, mess with the rotation. So you could go like 90 degrees there and come down to rotation. Uh, and you could come here and just mess with the rotation if you'd like. Um, obviously that won't affect mine because it's cylindrical and it won't matter. Uh, but if I come to scale here and press command, click in the middle and make it smaller on either end, that will really help the sizing in my opinion because I like it when it tails off and gets smaller rather than being like this noodle looking thing. And once you want to see the results of that, check mark the sweep nerves again. And you can see how those get thinner as they get to the end and the beginning. Now you can see how when I render it, it's looking a little rough. And this would look better if I chose a thinner diameter of my circle. But I like this thickness. And one thing I wanted to do, which is up until this point, it was pretty similar to the tutorial I sh shot it out at the beginning, this man's tutorial. Um, but one thing I did different and that really affected my results is I went and added a displacer to the tracer. Now with that displacer, I went to shading and noise and I left everything alone um, at first. You can come in here and mess with the scale and the type of noise you can mess with. Um, but if I just leave it here at the default and let me uncheck the sweep nerves, you can see uh, the difference in the lines from when it's checked to unchecked. If I um, bring back the sweep nerves and, and get some structure to this and give it a quick render, you can see how I got this. So you can already see similarities and obviously this is just gray right now but when you add textures whatever textures you add um, it will vastly improve the look you can see that i have two materials down here so this number five material obviously made this one and then the dragon material made this one so you can see the difference there and Obviously adding material really enhances it from the gray. But anyways guys, that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Check out my Instagram at That's Quezzy. Check out my store on Cellfi for some of the stuff I use. Check out my Patreon for daily files that I make and things from my store and all those benefits that are listed there. Check out the Skillshare for the full tutorial of the poster. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.